This is a video about the effects of smoking and we're going to be looking at it from a biological perspective. Now of course smoking is going to be a choice that uh, you will probably have already faced by this stage of your life and um, you will know for certain friends and family members who do smoke. It is also fairly likely that you have known someone who has had serious effects on their health due to smoking. So it's very relevant for us to know some of the causes of these effects on ill health. Of course it's also part of our syllabus that we need to cover. So here we go. A, a couple of points to start off with. Um, to summarise, cigarette smoke, very harmful, pretty bad for you. Heavy smoking can also damage the heart as well as the lungs and damage the blood vessels. Passive smoking has been proven to be an issue. Uh, there have been some famous cases of entertainers, one in particular called Roy Castle, who died through passive smoking. He was a trumpet player, played in lots of smoky clubs, and got lung cancer as a consequence, even though he wasn't a smoker. Lots of different chemicals in cigarette smoke. Lots of different chemicals in cigarette smoke. And the three we're going to be thinking about are nicotine, tar, and carbon monoxide. So nicotine to start off with, it's a drug uh, and it is a stimulant, it, even in small quantities, it will stimulate the nervous system, making people feel alert, uh, but it's also extremely addictive and cigarettes are really difficult to quit. Carbon monoxide, this is a poisonous gas, it has the formula CO rather than carbon dioxide, CO2, well, this is CO, and it looks like oxygen as far as haemoglobin is concerned. And so carbon monoxide will irreversibly bind to haemoglobin in your red blood cells. And that means that haemoglobin can no longer carry oxygen around the body. That's irreversible. Once that carbon monoxide has bound onto that haemoglobin, it won't let go and that haemoglobin is permanently out of commission. Your red blood cells last about 100 days and so that carbon monoxide in 100 or so days time will just be gotten rid of from your system anyway because your body will replace those red blood cells. Now this is a big old chemical formula, uh, you <laughs> by no means need to know this, but this is what goes on in the centre of a haemoglobin molecule. We've got this iron, Fe, in the middle of it. And in oxyhemoglobin, which is what we want, O2 binds onto that iron atom in the middle of hemoglobin. But if you've got carbon monoxide instead, that binds to exactly the same place, blocking oxygen from being able to bind. By the way, this is what chlorophyll looks like. Got magnesium in the middle of it. That's why plants need magnesium to make chlorophyll. A little formula for you. Carbon monoxide plus hemoglobin goes to carboxyhemoglobin. Carboxyhemoglobin. That is hemoglobin plus carbon monoxide. And it's irreversible. Not a substance, of course, in the cigarette smoke, but heat. Uh, dangerous to us. It burns away the cilia. Uh, so that mucus is not swept out of your bronchi, out of your trachea up and out of your throat uh, to the back of the mouth. Normally it would be swept up to the back of the mouth, you'd swallow it down and that would get rid of the mucus, it would get rid of the bacteria contained in the mucus as well. If you can't do this then the mucus will accumulate, form phlegm, you've got to cough it up more regularly and you get a smoker's cough. In a question you would say, in answering a question you would say coughing becomes more persistent resulting in damage to the alveoli. This is what healthy cilia look like. Look at that. Loads of cilia all over the place, waving and wafting and doing what they do best. This is what unhealthy cilia look like. Not so great. Not so great. So, which would you prefer? Wafting mucus out of your lungs. Hey, there we go. And tar. Oh, that's horrible, isn't it? Those are used cigarette filters, and you can see they're horrible and black and full of tar. Tar is a substance in cigarette smoke and so because it's in the smoke it gets deposited in the lungs. 
This is what those lungs look like, healthy lungs on the left. Um, you can see they're, they're lovely and red, that's what lungs should look like. On the right, doesn't look so good. Smoker's lungs, black and horrible. Now, you wouldn't say having black lungs is a disease in itself, but it shows you they're covered in tar, and that of course will have its own effects. Here we go. Number one, tar contains irritants. So they will irritate the lining of your air passages, that's your bronchi, your bronchioles, your trachea, and they will stimulate the goblet cells, remember those goblet cells, to produce more mucus. It will also settle in the alveoli, reduce the surface area for gas exchange. It will also potentially lead to cancer, particularly lung cancer. Tar is a carcinogen, and a carcinogen, that's a word which means it's a chemical which increases the risk of cancer. Cancer is a disease in which cells start to divide rapidly until growth becomes out of control. Now that means you get a growth developing, for example, in the wall of the bronchial tube. That causes a blockage and makes breathing much more difficult. Can also cause bleeding in the lungs as well. So sometimes coughing up blood is a sign, an early sign of lung cancer, or indeed a later sign of lung cancer. But the real thing with cancer, the real danger, is that unless you discover that growth and then destroy that growth, it can spread to other parts of the body. Let's have a look at some images about that. These are lungs with cancerous growths in them, uh, referred to here as a large cell carcinoma. You can see that these sort of growths are different, the tissues are different to the rest of the lung tissue. Well, you can see how it affects the lungs. Here it is, this, it's horrible, fibrous, scarry growth. And there's a huge tumour there. And on an x-ray, you can see on this x-ray here, this is the region of the tumour. This is the other side of the damage. Now, let's say that, there's my cursor, here it is. This clump of cells here is what you're looking at in the x-ray there. Now, as long as it stays as a clump of cells in the lung, well, it's not great, and it's going to seriously hamper lung function, but actually at this stage, it's not going to kill you. It kills you when cells break off from it and then travel in your bloodstream or in your lymph system, which is a, a similar circulatory system we have, and travel around the body and lodge elsewhere. Look at here, these are lodging elsewhere, and they're starting their own growth. And that is when you get, it's called metastases, but you do, it's not a word you need to know at GCSE. They are growths in other parts of the body. The cancer spreads. The cancer spreads. And it's made much, much more likely by deposits of tar inside the lungs. Lung cancer was unheard of before cigarette smoke. Now, we've looked at cancer, we've looked at tar causing that. Let's have a think about bronchitis. Excess mucus collecting in the bronchi and bronchioles because of damage to the cilia mean that irritants freely enter the lungs. In other words, the bacteria that are meant to be caught by the mucus and wafted out by the cilia, well, they still get caught by the mucus, but they don't get wafted out by the cilia. Therefore, they stay there, they sit there, and they will give you infections. Those infections will lead to inflammation, and that is called bronchitis. Let's have a look at a little cross-section. Normal cross-section that way. After bronchitis, you can see there's a great big swelling. Uh, this word edema here just means lots of fluid gathering underneath, a bit like a blister. You get a blister on your bronchi. Uh, uh, one bronchus, two bronchi. And that swells up, narrowing your airspace. And also note that this bit here is filling up with mucus. So air only has this amount here to travel down. Whereas here, in this bronchus, you've got a nice wide lumen for it to go down. Here's another image. So inflamed primary and secondary bronchi. And that 
narrows your airways, constricts your breathing. Emphysema. Emphysema is another condition linked to smoking, and in this, the walls of the alveoli become thin and weak. This is partly due to the infections that you get in your lungs due to bronchitis. As you cough more, and remember smokers do develop a smoker's cough, this coughing results in those alveoli, those weakened alveoli, bursting, and in the long term, and it's a long term chronic condition, this reduces the lung surface area available for oxygen absorption and of course the lung surface area available for carbon dioxide excretion. It also means that you lose a lot of the elasticity of the lung tissue and breathing becomes very painful and difficult. Let's have a look at alveoli as they should be. These are some nice small alveoli. There they are, next to each other there. And you can see because they're small, you've got a large surface area. Between the three of them, that's a pretty good large surface area. And hooray for that. We celebrate it. But once these burst and coalesce into great big alveoli, you lose enormous amounts of surface area. So this is a great big cavernous alveolus here. And without any of the dividing walls that were before, and therefore you've lost a lot of surface area from them, therefore less oxygen absorption and less CO2 excretion. In another diagrammatic form, that's what it looks like. You can see that here these alveoli have burst and all coalesced together. Heart disease. Well, smoking doesn't just harm your lungs, it harms your heart and your circulatory system as well. Smoking increases the chances of internal blood clots by making your platelets sticky. And that means they clump together. It also speeds up the rate at which fatty material, such as cholesterol, is deposited in the walls of your arteries. And as that cholesterol is deposited in the walls of your arteries, they become narrower. And so there's less space for blood to flow through. It also weakens the walls of the blood vessels, and they're more likely to burst. And if you have bursting blood vessels, that's very bad news. Your heart has to work harder because of the narrowed arteries. Therefore, you get higher blood pressure. Higher blood pressure can lead to more damage to your arteries. Also, the extra work that you are asking of your heart means that your heart requires more oxygen. But carbon monoxide in cigarette smoke prevents this. And also, the narrowing of your coronary arteries reduces the blood flowing to the heart, so it still gets less oxygen. All in all, bad news. These are stages of what we call atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. You start off with a little clot here and a little fatty deposit inside the wall of the artery. And if we smoke, uh, or if we have a really high saturated fat content diet, we get more cholesterol deposits in the wall of the artery. And that builds up like this and it builds up over time and by the time you get pretty old you'll have a fair few of these anyway regardless of whether or not you smoke but if you smoke you'll get these sooner and you'll get more of them now your body recognizes this as a wound and therefore clots start forming onto it and as these clots form more and more they block up the artery itself and as the artery becomes more and more blocked, blood flow is constricted, is restricted. This is an example of it in a very, very vital place. This artery going down the side of the heart here is called a coronary artery. It is a coronary artery. And this artery 
provides the muscle of the heart with the oxygen it needs, with the glucose that it needs, and of course the veins going back will remove the carbon dioxide it produces. So therefore if you get the narrowing of these arteries, this, these coronary arteries, much less blood gets through here. Now if you can write these stages down. Because there is less blood flowing through the coronary artery, it receives less oxygen. Therefore, it does more anaerobic respiration. Therefore, the heart muscle produces more lactic acid. Lactic acid is poisonous to heart muscle, and the heart muscle dies. In due course, this can lead to a heart attack, which, of course, can be fatal. Now here is a test for you to see how you're doing on all the material we've covered. What I suggest you do before going on to the test is to pause, go back to the start of this video, watch it again, make some more notes, and then try the test. Here we go with the test. So read these questions, have a piece of paper, and pause the video as soon as you start writing. Okay, we're going to move on to the answers now. I've trusted that you've had a good old time to pause this video to write out the answers properly. But now we're going to move on to the mark scheme for these questions. Let's see how we did. Number one, name the addictive component of cigarette smoke. Nicotine. How did you do on that? Number two, if a non-smoker is affected by cigarette smoke, it is called passive smoking. Correctly spell the word meaning causes cancer. Here we go. Carcinogenic. How did you do on your spelling there? Question four, how does smoking affect red blood cells? Two marks for this one, so let's see if we can pick out two of these marks. Number one, carbon monoxide. You'll get a mark for saying carbon monoxide. And number two, that binds irreversibly or permanently to hemoglobin, preventing oxygen from binding to it. Question number five, how can the heat of cigarette smoke lead to a smoker's cough? Two marks. Number one, cilia are damaged. Number two, mucus is not swept away or mucus builds up. And final question, explain the effects of emphysema. Number one, alveoli walls become thin or weak. Two, alveoli burst. Three, surface area is reduced. Four, gas exchange, key phrase, is slower, or oxygen diffusion is slower, or CO2 diffusion is slower. And then final mark for that, the lungs less elastic. Well, I hope you did well on that. Do replay this video as and when you need to.